Hello everyone, welcome back, happy Monday. Let me first of all apologise because <laughs> I did film this as a normal, you know, makeup, get ready with me video, but I don't know what I did to my camera, but the white balance, which I don't, I actually don't know the t technically what it does, but um, I'm not very good at technology, but it basically made me look throughout the whole video, you can't even see my nose, I, my face is so washed out that I'm unvi unviewable. So what I've done, so I didn't have to miss another Monday, is I've done this in kind of like just for audio. There are some visuals at the end of this video when the TikToks come up, there's three of them that will appear on screen. Um, but the rest is just kind of like listening to it. But it, the sound is recorded as if it was the video. So I do apologize for that. I will be very interested to know, however, if I was to do this series as just a podcast but upload it here onto YouTube and then maybe once every month or every two months do like a visual makeup look or upload this as a, as a podcast and then in the background like on screen have me doing a makeup look and then you can just you know choose to watch it or not but still have that audio to listen to oh uh, yeah I'll be interested to, to to see you know what your opinions are on that so thank you so much again and here we go into this week's um ghost stories video Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me and happy Monday. Sorry I missed last week. I had a really crazy week and then I wasn't feeling good. And um, the thought of being in front of lights was a bit too much. Um, and I pre-record I pre all my videos basically, but I hadn't pre-recorded my ghost story video. I was just gonna record it and put it up um, for like the next, for like a few days later, but I kind of left it too late. Anyway, here I am. Monday is where I tell my subscribers ghost stories that they send in to me here on this email address, ghost stories, scary stories, creepy people, creepy experiences. It doesn't have to be a physical like, uh, you know, like haunted, haunted ghosts. Okay, so our first story is called Santa's House. It says, hi Robert, I'm a huge fan and love your videos. When I was younger, about five or six, my family moved into a new house. My parents had split, so it was just my mum, my two brothers and me. Before we moved in, a lot of work was done on the house, as the man that lived there before us had actually used the bathtub as a fish tank. They found bones of other animals buried out the back garden and the electricity was wired to the neighbours. So we moved in and my mum had this little plate that hung on the wall with a picture of Jesus on it. The first night we were there, the plate came down off a wall and smashed. As time went on, a lot of different things would happen in the house. Things falling and breaking and noises upstairs where we were all downstairs but then it got worse. My mum would have to deal with myself and my brothers crying that we couldn't leave our rooms due to the man standing on the landing outside of our two rooms. He would just stand there staring at us. We never felt comfortable in the house. It was like someone was constantly watching us. My mum had a picture of us on the mantelpiece on Santa's lap. Christmas, there were four different pictures, all with the same Santa over the years. My nanny came over for a visit and said to my mum, oh, it's funny that you have those pictures up because this was Santa's house. My mum was shocked to find out that the man who played Santa in our Christmas photos was actually the previous owner of our house. Needless to say, my mum took all the pictures down and they haven't gone back up. After that, she had a blessing done on the house and we didn't see the man standing on the landing anymore. We had other stuff happen in the house, but the man on the landing never came back. Well, <laughs> okay, so that's, that's one of those like coincidental, really fucking creepy. You know, something like a man using a bathtub as a fish tank, that would be like a no-go for me for like renting a house or moving into it, you know? Okay, so now we have an audio story. You can send your stories to me in audio. It gives me a second to like finish my makeup doing things. And this is called The Poltergeist. All right. Hi, Robert. Um, I actually have a few stories to tell. I just want to say I really love your videos and I love the um, ghost stories and makeup series. Um, I love just watching it when I'm doing my makeup. Anyway, let's cut to the point, okay? So I'm a very spiritual person. I do tarot reading. 
I'm very in tune with that sort of thing ever since I was a very, very small child. So I have two stories, actually. It's a two in one. No, actually, I have three stories, but like they all sort of lead into one another. So the first one, I think um, I need to give a little bit of context. Um, so we lived in this old house and a few weird things happened, like even when I wasn't born. And this particular story is when I wasn't born. Um, so it was late at night and my I, my mum was still pregnant with me and she lay she was lying in bed with me and my sister because she like couldn't get to sleep she struggled to get to sleep when she was a baby like a child like she must have been about three I think at this point anyways um so my mum was um asleep and she just woke up to this feeling that someone was watching her um and she couldn't move for a minute so she was a bit like because she was so scared she rolled over and to her horror there was a ghost of a little girl with long wavy blonde hair standing over her staring blankly at her i don't know how long this this entity or spirit or whatever was looming over her but it must have been a long time for her to actually wake up and see it <sighs> <laughs> she tells me she's still terrified to this day and that image will never leave her head like it's so scary so this leads me to another story okay so I had a similar experience I would always experience paranormal things in house like doors opening on their own plates floating and then falling um, my door handle, like, going up and down. It was one of them doors where you have to press the handle down for it to actually open. Um, just weird stuff like that. And um, I'd see a little girl running up the stairs. Because I had a living room with, like, um, a door with a window in. So you could kind of see up the stairs. I'd see that. But the main thing and the scariest part is I would see a little girl and I was like, three or four and I knew it wasn't my imagination because I told my mum about it um and I described her having long socks wavy blonde hair quite long um and wearing like a specific outfit and my mum was just shocked because I just described the exact thing that she had seen herself oh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kids have overreactive, like, overactive imaginations, but, like, you just cannot explain that. You just can't explain that. Um, So for years and years and years, I'd keep seeing this little girl, and I wasn't really scared of her by a certain point, and I went to go and see a psychic, and she actually told me a little bit about this spirit, Um, and she said that I was, like, her mother in a past life or something. I don't know if that's, like, right or not, but you know, that's up for interpretation. Why well, this spirit is attached to me and she actually has followed me to this house and I do still see her occasionally. So that leads me to my third and final story. Now this is in my new house. We moved about five years ago. This is a new build house, no history behind it, nothing. The way that my house layout is, is you've got my bedroom, you come out to a hallway. On this side of the hallway, you have the office, um, and on this side of the hallway, you have the bathroom. So I just got done, um, like, doing tarot readings and, you know, doing my thing. Um, so I got up um, to go and go to the bathroom. And I'd left the door open. Because there was nobody really in. Let me just say that the office door was shut when I went to the bathroom. There's a mirror in my bathroom and I watched it open from the mirror from the reflection okay I was a bit like oh it must have been the wind so I go to like wash my hands and my face and then I turn around and the office chair that was at the desk had pulled out and turned round to face me I was about ready to burn the friggin house down by this point um I was absolutely 
shocked, terrified, horrified, all of, all of the above. I immediately got the stage, cleansed the entire house. I was not about to do that, okay? Little did I know that when I got up again to go to the bathroom, we had like a clothes rail at the time, yeah? Like in, in the office, because like we were sorting some stuff out. This clothing rail was heavy, okay? There was so many clothes on it. While I was in the bathroom, I heard this really loud crash. The clothing rail had been thrown across the room. So all the clothes were all over the place. The rail had broken. It was on the complete opposite side of the room. So there was no way it would, could have just fallen. If it had just fallen, it probably would have just like tipped over a little bit. And some of the clothes may have come off, but not all of them. No, I'm talking like everything was like thrown across the room. Oh, I, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. So those were my stories. I apologize if it was a little bit long, um, but as you've said in previous videos, longer stories fill in some time. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this story. And if you hear this, thank you for listening. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that, that was it. <laughs> Thank you so much for your stories. I, again, child ghosts, you know how I feel about ch child ghosts. They're not my favorite kind of anything. I always, I know I always say this, but the thought of a ghost like just messing with my stuff, it, I find really irritating. Imagine if I was like severely haunted, right? And I was just sitting here trying to record a video for everyone. And then suddenly, you know, my background went flying or this candlestick that still doesn't work went like flying across the room. I would be so pissed. And I wonder if, right, this is a really random thought. I wonder if children ghosts, child ghosts, especially like, um, oh, I was gonna say old children, but like olden days children, because being a child back in the day was very much, you know, be seen, not heard. You know, you're not useful until you're 18. I wonder if they're like, if they would be like scared of like an adult, non-ghost like human if you were to like see a child ghost right and tell it off like go back to the other realm you know <laughs> if it'd be like oh my god i'm sorry and then like go away or like i don't know okay and next up as is custom we have marcus reading us two stories all right hello this first story is called the night before christmas eve hi robert I've been meaning to write in with my ghost story for such a long time. When I was 12, we moved into the house my mum still lives in to this day. I am now 31. When we moved in, my mum gave my younger sister and me the biggest room, as we were sharing, but we only lasted one night in this room. We both felt a dark, oppressive, masculine presence, and felt like we weren't welcome. We were both so terrified by this, we were unable to sleep. The next day we begged her to move us into a different room, and she swapped rooms with us. I was so scared of the presence in that room that I wouldn't even go to the toilet in the middle of the night as I had to walk past the bedroom to get there. Fast forward about two years, it was the day before Christmas Eve. My mum and siblings had gone to visit my grandparents. Being the antisocial teenager I was, I decided to stay home and study. I was alone in the house with only our family dogs for company. We used to have a TV meter you would put one pound coins in to watch. That day there was 18 pound on the meter, so no danger of it running out whilst they were out. I was getting a head start on my homework with the TV on in the background when suddenly it turned off. I went to the meter, checked it, 18 pound credit, switched the TV off and on again, still not working. I was just about to call my mum to ask why it's not working when the TV turned back on to the white static screen, the volume at full blast. I tried to turn it down, but it was stuck on maximum. Just as I was starting to freak out, I hear footsteps upstairs. Not just normal footsteps, but the sound of old-fashioned heeled men's boots walking back and forth. My dog started barking at the ceiling, running up and down the living room, following the footsteps. It was at this point the TV cut out again, and in the silence, I noticed the footsteps were going from my mum's bedroom into mine, and then back again. Our bedrooms were separated by a wall, but this didn't seem to be an issue for whatever was making the footsteps. At this point, my heart was racing. I felt sick and was too scared to move. As if I wasn't scared enough, the stereo turned itself on, and my dog suddenly stopped running laps of the living room. He froze in front of me in a protective stance, growling and barking at nothing in the doors of the hallway. The room was absolutely freezing. I felt like I was glued to the spot and had chills all over my body. 
I had the overwhelming feeling that I was being watched, and whatever was watching me really did not want to be in the house. I am now beyond petrified, frozen in fear. The stereo and TV are still turning on and off, and my dog is still acting crazy. I rung my mum absolutely frantic, demanding that she comes home right now. She told me to calm down, shut myself in the living room, just in case someone is actually in the house, and reassured me that she will come back straight away. After I put the phone down, I dived off the sofa, slammed the living room door shut, and pushed a heavy leather armchair in front of the door. I went back to the sofa, picking my dog up, forcing him to sit next to me. I cuddled him so tight, hiding my face in his fur, and kept repeating, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. I sat like this for ten minutes before everything stopped, as suddenly as it started. My mum arrived home shortly after, finding me barricaded in the living room, chair in front of the door, crying and shaking. To this day, nothing explains my experience, and I choose to never be alone in that house again. A few years later, my mum told me she found out from a neighbour that the previous owner, Mr Browning, had died in her bedroom. He was elderly when he passed, and was known on the street for being very intolerant towards children. I'm now in my thirties with a child of my own, and to this day I still get bad vibes from my mum's room. The second story is called The Christmas Ornaments. Hi Robert, can't get enough of the ghosts, ghouls and glamour. Keep up the great work. A little backstory on my mum and dad's house. It was built by my great-great-grandfather over a hundred years ago. He and his wife both died in the house. He from a gunshot wound, and she had a heart attack in what is now our living room. We've always suspected one, if not both of them, drop in for a visit every now and again. We all have multiple, unexplained experiences, but thought I would share the earliest one that I can recall. I hope you enjoy it. I was 10 to 12 years old. It was mid to late November, and my mum and I were decorating the Christmas tree. Just the two of us. No one else was home, as my dad worked a third shift. We had put on all the lights, the garland, and these handmade purple ornaments a friend of my mum had made for her. We stopped there and drove into town about 10 minutes away. We were gone about 30 minutes total. When we returned home, the round purple ornaments had been removed and neatly placed in a straight line around the seat of our sectional couch. These ornaments are glass and there were nearly 30 of them. If they had simply fallen off, they would have completely shattered. Someone or something carefully and strategically placed them on the sofa as if to organise them. My mum and I stood there, frozen, looked at one another and simply said, it must have been granny. Maybe not the most creepy or scary, but it's nice to know we have family around no matter what. Thank you for taking the time to read my story, and I hope I get to see you tell it soon. I can't wait to see the look you create. Hope you're doing well, and send in the doggies lots of love. What look are you creating, Robert? Christmas ghost pumpkin, probably. Yeah, probably something like that. Robert he always likes to go around saying, oh, I'm so crazy. He says it all the time. Anyway, see you later. Let you never say that. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's kind of a Christmas ghost pumpkin. I don't know. Okay, let's go to some TikToks. If you have some creepy TikToks you want me to see, anything like a little bit like strange, you can um, tag me in them at Robert Welsh M U A. Okay, let's take a look at the first TikTok. I hope it's not too scary. <laughs> I mean, when you lay in someone else's grave, like, what do you expect? Like, that's kind of rude. Is he in a grave? <laughs> I just assumed any hole in the floor would be a grave. I think it's a grave. Listen, the disrespect, anyway. That doesn't look like a grave, though, because, like, do people line their graves with, like, brick like that? I just thought it was mud and then your casket. That man's on a building site pretending he's in a graveyard. <laughs> What's next, please? How would, how would someone's body fit behind the cabinet like that? You know, I would be like, oh, someone crawled behind there, but it's pressed right up against the wall. Okay, let's take a look at our last one. Aura. Aura, ahora que me rabio, eh? Eh? Como si qui? Che 
Ja, die. I don't like that. <laughs> Why would I add that noise to it? Ooh, just like that. Ooh. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week. If you have a story, you can go ahead and send it here to this email address. Um, audio, video of yourself. Um, just a normal email. Pictures, if you have picture evidence. I love a good picture evidence. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.